which brings me to the foolish city of Halifax and their foolish city councilor named Richard Zurowski. Uh, he's pictured here. And if I can quote Richard Zurowski about Richard Zurowski, he says about Richard Zurowski, Councillor Zurowski is an active promoter of evidence-based, conscientious decision-making, if he does say so himself. He's not like those other guys who go off half-cocked. Richard Zurowski is conscientious, and he really thinks. Just ask him. Uh, oh, here's today's newspaper. Um, <clears throat> Zurowski wants city staff to examine possibility of changing offensive names. <laughs> he said the research will dovetail well with the work of a task force on the commemoration of Edward Cornwallis and indigenous history. Okay, got it. Offensive names. I'll, I'll read some of the story. A Halifax council member wants City Hall staff to examine the possibility of name changes affecting municipal things due to the offensive nature of the names. Councillor Richard Zurowski Timberley Beachville Clayton Park Wedgwood said Monday he plans to present a notice of motion in Tuesday's council session regarding a proposed staff report. There are a lot of offensive names, not only to our First Nations people, but also to blacks in the community. And a lot of our names go back to colonialism. Now, as you can see, Richard Zorowski is neither black nor First Nations himself, but I, I guess he speaks for them. He's the King of the Blacks and King of the First Nations. I missed the votes, but he's speaking for them. Maybe he's appropriating their voices. He's white explaining to them that they ought to be offended, but he's enjoying this moment of anarchy where he gets to tear things down. He wants to join in. He wants not only to be in the mob, he wants to lead it. I mean, there are so, so many offensive names. Halifax itself was named after the Earl of Halifax, George Montague Dunk a great man in terms of his impact on the world. His courage and resourcefulness, he helped build Nova Scotia. But do you really think all of his conduct could withstand the scrutiny of a woke faculty lounge at Dalhousie University in 2020, or Richard Zurowski? I mean, for one thing, <laughs> Halifax didn't even believe in gay marriage. <laughs> and then again, neither did Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama until about five minutes ago, but still. I mean, who better to sit in judgment of historical figures like Halifax himself or Edward Cornwallis, the founder of the city that bears Halifax's name. Um, Edward Cornwallis came from a leading British family. Uh, you may have heard of his nephew, I think it was his nephew, Charles Cornwallis, who led the unsuccessful British uh, soldiers against George Washington in the Revolutionary War. So these were men of action. These were great men in the historical sense. But look, action in those days was more than not, it was bloody. They were soldiers. Cornwallis fought against the Indians in Nova Scotia, and he fought in a brutal way. Some would say as brutally as the Indians fought him. But he passed this proclamation, that a reward of 10 guineas be granted for every Indian Micmac taken or killed. So he paid a bounty, not a rare thing in war back then, but I can understand why this rankles people in 2020, and why Cornwallis' statue is dishonored by some people in light of our sentiments and beliefs in 2020. But if you're going to do that, if you're going to go back 200 or 250 years and knock down people who don't meet your woke standard of manners and customs in 2020, you are not going to have any history at all. I mean, I guess we'll have to knock down the pyramids themselves. They were built by slaves. Better empty out the great museums and destroy the hieroglyphics, some of which show slaves. Guys, I just want to tell you now, if we're going to get rid of anyone who was cruel, who fought wars brutally, and especially anyone who had slaves, i got to whisper this next part to you. I want you to brace yourself. Mohammed, as in the founder of Islam, he had slaves. And if you're into book burnings these days, well, be careful, friends, because nothing less than the Koran itself blesses slavery. Here's the Quran, Surah 4, verse 24 of the Quran, just one of the ton of passages outlining the rules for slavery. So it doesn't ban slavery, it prescribes it, it describes it. And also prohibited to you are all married women, except those your right hands possess. That means you can't have sex with a married woman, uh, other than your wife, unless you take that married woman in war as your slave then you can do what you want with her. She's a rape slave. That's what those your right hand possesses means, rape slaves. It's why the Islamic State 
renewed the practice of wartime rape slaves and had slave markets in the Islamic State. Hey, let me know when the Quran is deplatformed. I won't wait up for Richard Zorowski, but seriously, is all of history to be deleted because it doesn't meet our fashion? Of course, it's contrary to all our modern beliefs because that's how we define our superiority. But those who want to build a new utopia must first destroy everything of the old way. Mao Zedong in China destroyed everything from the old system, art, music, words. He had to to create his new utopia. He even contemplated giving people numbers, not names. He wanted to raise everything to the ground, to bring it to zero, to start everything again, destroy everything. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.